Hello and welcome to Physio Classroom. In today's video, we are going to discuss in detail about the safety considerations that a therapist must be aware of while mobilizing ICU patient. Knowing about these safety considerations will not only enable us in giving evidence-based therapy to our patients, but also significantly reducing the ICU cost of care. To tell us more about it, I have invited today my co-faculty member Dr. Ashish Negi who is working in the field of cardiopulmonary rehabilitation since past 5 years. So let's begin. Hello everyone. Today I will be sharing a very important information about mobilization in ICU setting. All the information that I am about to share is taken from a journal Critical Care and was published in year 2014. This research article talks in detail about the various safety consideration while mobilizing ICU patients. The safety considerations have been broadly divided into four categories. First is respiratory, second is cardiovascular, third is neurological, fourth is medical, surgical and other miscellaneous. In this video, I will be discussing in detail about the respiratory safety considerations. So the first respiratory consideration that we are going to discuss is intubation. Intubation or presence of artificial airways is not a contraindication as such for ICU mobilization. But we have to assure that airways are not displaced prior, during or after the treatment. For this, we have to assure two things. First, that all the lines and tubes remain slack while mobilization. Second, we have to mark the location of ET at the level of mouth. If the mark at the ET is at the same level, that means the artificial airways are not displaced after the mobilization. Second respiratory consideration is divided into three parts. First is fraction of inspired oxygen or FiO2. Second is percutaneous oxygen saturation or SpO2. Third is respiratory rate. Patients receiving FiO2 less than 60% can be mobilized in and out of the bed with no potential risks. Whereas Patient receiving FiO2 higher than 60% can be mobilized with sufficient medical supervision to avoid potential complications or adverse reaction of mobilization. And for percutaneous oxygen saturation or SpO2, patients having SpO2 greater than 90% can be mobilized in and out of the bed without any potential risk of mobilization. Whereas Patients having SpO2 less than 90% can be mobilized within the bed under sufficient medical supervision but should not be mobilized at all out of the bed because of the potential risk. Patients having respiratory rate less than 30 can be mobilized in and out of the bed with no potential risk. Whereas patients having respiratory rate higher than 30 can be mobilized in and out of the bed but under sufficient medical supervision. Third safety consideration is related to ventilation in which first we are going to discuss is about high frequency oscillatory ventilation. High frequency oscillatory ventilation is a lung protective strategy in which respiratory rates are increased by three times than the normal whereas tidal volumes are decreased while mobilization higher tidal volumes are required. So therefore, patients receiving HFOB should not be mobilized out of the bed at all and should be mobilized within the bed under sufficient medical supervision. Second is positive and expiratory pressure or PEEP. It causes increase in intrathoracic pressure that may cause orthostatic or exercise induced hypotension. So patients receiving PEEP less than 10 cm of water can be mobilized safely. Whereas patients receiving high PEEP than 10 cm of water can have potential complications or adverse reaction of mobilization rather than the benefits. So such patients should be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision or in the presence of experienced physiotherapist. Third is ventilator dysynchrony or it is simply called as patient ventilator fighting. Mobilizing such patients may further add to the dysynchrony. So therefore patients having ventilator dysynchrony should be mobilized under sufficient medical supervision. Fourth respiratory consideration is rescue therapies. 
patients receiving vasodilators such as nitric oxide and prostacycline may experience decrease in blood pressure during any positional changes. So such patients should be mobilized by experienced physiotherapist or under sufficient supervision. So the last rescue therapy is prone positioning. It is a positional strategy to maximize ventilation in already fully ventilated critically ill patient. It is usually given in severe lung infection also known as acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS. Any mobilization in such patient may cause complications of mobilization. So such patients should not be mobilized at all. So in this video, we discussed about the respiratory safety considerations while mobilizing ICU patient. In our upcoming video, we'll be discussing about cardiovascular safety considerations. Life is all about learning and sharing. And there were a lot of things that I learned from Dr. Ashish Negi today. And I believe that learning stops when we do not share our knowledge with others. So keep learning, keep sharing and stay connected.